Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds in the studio Monday morning. It'll be an interesting conversation because we're going to have two perspectives. One from the guy that was watching it at home on TV. The other guy was at the show. What, do you want to go first? Let me go for, uh, first here because uh, the Chiefs can't expect to keep winning like this. No. That's going to come Absolutely back to bite them in the behind. Well, a there. very big deal. Twice now, officials' decisions have really made the made the difference in the game. Last week, correct call. Guy's foot or toe actually is on the end line. Yesterday, an interference, late flag interference, on which the replay, I didn't see any interference at all. But then again, the officials there, you guys are there, I did not see any of it. Anyway, Harrison Butker booms through um, the 51-yard field goal, which he had to do, and the Chiefs get a one-point win out of that. And in this game... I really uh, was fascinated by Kansas City's offensive attack. Rushing is what made the difference. The Chiefs ran for 149 yards. Cincinnati ran for 74. But leading the Chiefs was Isaiah Pacheco, as you would expect. And he left the game with an ankle injury that has yet to be determined. He was on crutches, but I think that's precautionary more than anything else. How it worked out? Well, it worked out with the Chiefs' win, a one-point win, and now they go on the road for the first time this year. Now, your thoughts having been there. The first thing is, as far as officiating, uh, the, I saw uh, probably three times um, the Bengals jump off sides and never called it. The officiating overall was not great. I um, think and I hate either. to see a game come down to officiating because it sucks and it is what it is, but they got to stop playing down to their opponent. That's the biggest thing that I see, the, have seen in the last, I know it's just been two weeks, but man, they're playing down at these opponents and that's going to burn you and it's going to bite you. And I have, a you know, going into Atlanta, maybe they just weren't watching the Bengals as close as they should have. I just, I, I have a feeling like yesterday, Obviously, the turnovers hurt, but there was some. If I had a feeling like that may have been on the coaches as much as it was on the players. I think so. I think the play calling had something to do with it. It was a difference in the way the Chiefs normally do play on offense, and Mahomes may not have been quite as comfortable doing that, relying on the running backs the way they did, but still, it comes away with a massive amount of yardage rushing wise and not so great passing wise well that may have been brought about by cincinnati's defense i I honestly don't know that but i do know that cincinnati is not as bad as their two losses would indicate Mm -hmm. they're they're a good football team and they will regroup and they will play well has me worried a little bit about pacheco's injury because they do need him samaj p ryan in his glory years, the all-time leading rusher at Oklahoma, and many good years in the pros, and the other kid, Carson Steele, a good hard yeah. runner, but you better have the line in front of you, and you better have that running scheme intact. Still, you're right about the Atlanta Falcons. that They play tonight, incidentally, against Philadelphia, and I think that's going to be a very good football game, but they're tough. And you have uh, Kirk Cousins, a quarterback, who your defensive backfield, which did not show particularly great yesterday, they were they were a little late on their coverage. Still, uh, Cousins can pick them apart. Mm-hmm. But and then again, Joe Burrow did yesterday too, and he's pretty good. I, I shudder to think about what that game would have looked like had they had a healthy T. Higgins in there too. And it would have been a different. Did, uh, Higgins did play a little bit, didn't he? I don't think so. Well, no. he had. I think he. Well, regardless of that, he's he's still banged up. Mm-hmm. And and Chase, <laughs> I thought, boy, you get flagged for arguing like that. Well, he didn't get flagged for arguing. He got flagged for the language that he used toward the official. And you can imagine, <laughs> the official said it was unacceptable. You know fully well what he was saying to him. But over and above that, Chase had a pretty good argument because. While it supposedly had to do with the tackle, it did not. It was hands to the face and the face mask being grabbed, and it wasn't called. And you're right, I agree with you. I did not think that was a well-officiated game at all. Yeah, both sides, it was a horribly officiated game. And uh, Bengals fans, you can complain all you want, but again, I saw a bunch of stuff on our side, too, that they oh, just it, didn't call. It was it bad. Even it, just, it, it really does. And like I said in the beginning, unfortunately, that causes a game, but it does. But the Chiefs better... <laughs> Fix what they've got to fix going into uh, further because after watching what New Orleans did to the Dallas Cowboys yesterday, forty-two to nineteen. Forget about it, my friend. <laughs> there is a, there is an old adage though, Mike, that I'm surprised didn't come into effect, and I'm surprised the referee, Mr. Kemp, didn't say to the other official, "You don't make." 
calls like that that are shaky. It was not blatant interference. If there was interference, it wasn't blatant, and it was a late flag. You don't do that with seconds remaining in the game. That just is not protocol. I think that's what that discussion was about, mm-hmm. why they were all waiting. And this, and what, what, what are we talking about here? What are we talking about here? A guy gets downgraded, I believe, in the officiating. Anyway, beside the point, Chiefs get the win. We'll <laughs> see what happens, Ned. Now we are getting very, very close to the end of the regular season. We pretty much know that the Royals are... Hopefully going to make it in. Probably not going to win their division, but at least they're getting in with the wild card. They have 12 games remaining to the Kansas City Royals, and they are in very good shape. Now, they do trail Cleveland by four games in the race in the American League Central, so they're probably not going to overhaul the Guardians, not with that little time remaining. But the wild card, they're in very good stead. The Cardinals are one game away from mathematical elimination. That one game could come tonight. Cardinals are playing the Pirates in a loss. Well, that spells doom. But this is really interesting, too, because you take a look at the final schedule. The Royals do not play the Cleveland Guardians. Don't play them anymore. But, Mike, guess who does play Cleveland? The Cardinals. And they play them this weekend up in St. Louis, a three-game series. Is it possible that St. Louis might be a big help to their cousins across the state? Could happen. You never can tell. <laughs> anyway, it's still a long way to go. Now, the Springfield Cardinals ended their regular season yesterday, and they ended it with a loss 9-5 to to the San Antonio Missions. Now, what the Cardinals do is get on the bus and don't come home. They go to Little Rock, Arkansas to start the playoff series tomorrow night against the Arkansas Travelers. One game in Little Rock, day off, and then Thursday and Friday here in town, Friday if necessary, here in town. It's a best of three playoffs as is the championship round and that is next weekend. So we'll see just exactly what happens. It should be just an awful lot of fun. Playoff race two for NASCAR was over the weekend as well. Who's in the uh, points lead right now? Interestingly enough, the same guys because the winner at Watkins Glen was not one of the individuals in the points race. Keep in mind now that when they have these NASCAR playoff races, all the drivers are involved. The field is full. It's 40 drivers, but there are only a few who are eligible for the NASCAR championship. Chris Buescher, who's not in that hunt for the points championship, did get the win, and he beat in overtime... This name is not familiar to many, many racing people here in this country. Shane Van Gisbergen, he is from New Zealand, and he is a world-renowned road racer. Now, he's on one of the teams, NASCAR teams, and anytime there's a road race, Van Gisbergen comes in here to run. Now, get used to the name because uh, Shane Van Gisbergen is not a kid, but he is moving to the United States next year and is going to run the entire NASCAR circuit. And why? (laughs) I'll tell you exactly why. More money on the NASCAR circuit than there is anywhere else. So Shane Van Gisbergen from New Zealand, who finished second, uh, was the challenger in this one. So the points race doesn't really change. Next week, they run at Bristol, Tennessee. The racetrack is in Tennessee. The town of Bristol is cut in half, Virginia and Tennessee. It's really kind of a very interesting geographic situation. But after next week's race, four drivers get eliminated, the bottom four in the 16-point standing. And then they're going to Kansas City, right? They do indeed. And a lot of my friends going up for that one. How did our local college football teams do this weekend? Bears got their first win. Missouri State held off a Lindenwood team. That's a not, They're not bad. Lindenwood can play the game. Bears won it 28-14. to 14. Missouri Missouri had a real struggle with Boston College, but did defeat the Boston College Eagles 27-21. Evangel was a 38-14 winner over Sterling. Now, Mike, I want you to digest this. Evangel's been in this league, the Kansas Athletic Conference. This is their second year. They've never lost a game. Wow. That tells you something. Yeah. It tells you two things. Vangel's pretty good, and that conference, well... Might not be as good. <laughs> and Southwest Baptist got a 42-10 win over Oklahoma Panhandle A&M. So, indeed, we had some very good local football. More coming up. And i uh, got to give props to my K-State Wildcats for handing it to Arizona and Manhattan they on Friday night. Big, big time. time. You have a great day, sir.